engaged in fraud for decades by producing these fraudulent financial statements and inflating the value of a number of his properties. In this ruling, the judge sides entirely with the AG's office on this issue of the financial statements, saying that they are they were completely fraudulent and they've been for a decade and that they've been persistently used in business. That is a big blow to Trump. So the issue going forward at trial, which is currently set um, for, for next week, um, is this issue of how much Trump would need to pay the attorney general on that issue. There are remaining claims in this case that will also be part of the case going forward. Now, the judge also finding that rejecting entirely Trump's arguments about how he came up with the valuations for his property. The AG has said that he inflated some of those properties over the years in these statements by as much as over $2 billion, even as high as $3.6 billion. And the judge is saying that how Trump derived these valuations was a fantasy world, not the real world. Uh, and they also he also addressed this question of one of the allegations is that Trump had inflated the value of his penthouse, saying it was three times as big as it was. And that has been one of these claims that has really stood out because it is more tangible than some other um, arguments here about valuations and appraisals. And the judge said on that, this inflation of the size of his penthouse, that's 10,000 square feet. Trump, in one of the financial statements, said it was 30,000 square feet. The judge said a discrepancy of this order of magnitude by a real estate developer sizing up his own living space of decades can only be considered fraud. So this is a complete rejection of Trump's defense that he didn't inflate his financial statements, his net worth for a decade. You know, this was the vehicle through which he obtained loans and insurance. And that is part of this ongoing case. Now, I just want to also note that there is still an appeal here. Trump's lawyers have um, sued the AG's office and the judge last week. An appeals court is expected to rule this week. It's unclear how that will affect the start of the trial, which is now set for Monday. Well, Interesting. All right, Kara Scannell reporting. Thank you. Let's bring in conservative lawyer George Conway and CNN anchor and chief legal analyst Laura Coates. Laura, first of all, what are your takeaways from this ruling? What does this mean for the Trump Organization's ability to do business in New York State? Well, that's pretty much a dead deal when it comes to that. The idea that we're hearing a summary judgment motion, this is so significant, Wolf. Summary judgment essentially says, listen, judge, even if we were to have a trial, on the facts that I'm presenting to you right now, as a matter of law, there's no argument that could possibly be made either with a straight face or otherwise that would change the outcome of this particular part of the case. The judges are normally quite averse to doing that sort of ruling because in their minds they say it should be before a fact finder, a jury, have an opportunity for the person to have, even in a civil liability case, a presumption of innocence and have it be proven by the prosecution in this case. To have a summary judgment motion tells you just how clear cut the evidence must have been in front of this judge to suggest no matter what you could possibly tell me at a trial, as a matter of law, you are liable. This is so significant. You're right. Uh, George, what do you think? Uh, how big of a blow potentially is this for the former president and his adult children? It's essentially the corporate, the, the equivalent of the corporate death penalty for the Trump organization in New York State. And the reason for that is the statute that was invoked. It's called the Martin Act. It was enacted 102 years ago. And it is an extremely powerful weapon that the state can use against fraudsters. And it's powerful for a number of reasons. One is it doesn't require proof of fraudulent intent by the business or its uh, CEO or any of its officers. And it doesn't require proof that the false numbers that are cooked up in the business are actually relied on by anyone. It's, it's, it's enough that the numbers kept on the books, whether the company be publicly traded or a private corporation like the Trump Corporation, it's enough that the numbers be false. And here, as Laura ac accurately pointed out, there was no dispute that the numbers were false and sub substantially so. And in fact, the Trump's, Trump's defense, which isn't a defense under the Martin Act, was, well, nobody was going to rely on this because we basically said nobody should rely on this because, you know, essentially everyone knows I'm lying because I'm a liar. I mean, that's a little bit tendentious, but not far from the truth. The other aspect of the Martin Act, and that's the most, which is the most important piece of what happened today, is that it provides for extraordinary remedies, even in the civil context. And that those remedies include basically 
the stripping of the ability to do business in the state of New York and the ordering of, dissolu of the dissolution of a business doing business in New York. And that's what the judge did today. No matter what he finds in the damages phase of this trial, he, he, the Trump organization is out of business. And that's not good for Donald Trump. Yeah, that's a huge, huge setback.